EP1100, Data Communication and Computer Networks. In this module, I will go over network layer functions. The network layer provides end-to-end -end connections. We have seen the data links before, and they can pro also provide some, some uh, small network functionality. But if you want to build a very large network, a well, what we call a wide area network, then you need a network layer. The, we see the links as providing hop-to-hop -hop delivery between switches that operate on the network layer, also referred to as layer 3. So you see the node B, which has three protocol layers, as well as node E. So the data delivered by physical and data link layers get switched at the network layer and then sent out on data links and physical layer. And these data links and physical layers can be different on the input and output side. The network layer can bridge together networks of very different types. And this is the way to build very large networks because the world cannot agree on, on standards how to build networks on a lower layer. And there has to be also innovation where new technologies, uh, faster optical links, new radio technologies should be able to be connected together with existing systems. And this is the function of the network layer. So the service that it provides is an end-to-end -end connectivity for arbitrarily large networks of any topology. It allows different operators, meaning different network owners, and the owners can have their networks partitioned into different administrative domains. For instance, a large operator such as Telia or Deutsche Telekom could have administrative domains which are national in the countries where they operate. And as I said before, the network layer service connects together many different data link networks that could be of different standards. So we have seen the IEEE 802.11 and 802.3, the other types of data links that I've not gone through, such as synchronous data hierarchy, and we have the access networks of the 3G, 4G, and 5G mobile networks. It should prevent or resolve congestion, which is another word for overload. This is done by techniques called traffic engineering. Requirements of the network layer is that it should select the best routes for the network, where we have to define best, and we will look into the various criteria for that. It should provide a globally unique addressing scheme so that only one computer responds to an address, it's a given address. It has to provide this end-to-end -end connectivity over arbitrarily large networks without stressing the switches that are used in the network layer. That means that the address tables where you look up the destination addresses in the packets should be scalable and may not contain all the addresses in the global network, of course. There could also be expectations on the network layer protocol to provide quality of service to applications. That usually refers to the delay of the service, the delay that packets occur in the network, and loss of packets. Both the delay and the loss are caused by congestion primarily. The functions in a switch at the network protocol layer is of course to switch the data from input links to output links. So it receives packets from the incoming data links where the packet is the payload of the data link frame. It looks up the destination address to determine the output and uses the address tables of the switch for that. Then it transfers the packet from the input port to the output port through the internal network of the switch. This network is sometimes referred to as switch fabric. The output link might not be available when the packet arrives there, so in the packet might need to be buffered. This is the queuing that can cause delay in the switch. And then packets are sent out from that buffer in five order for meaning first in, first out. There could be other order of service as well. For instance, if you provide priority service, then a high priority packet will be sent out before any low priority packets. This could, for instance, be to give lower delay for packets of high priority than to those of a low priority. A central function is also the congestion control to avoid overloading links and to prevent buffer overflow. 
This could be a network layer protocol function, but it could also be absent in the network protocol. The most central function for the network protocol is the selection of paths through the network, which we refer to as routing. And the routes are computed in each switch. The results are then placed in the address tables and used when looking up destination addresses of packets in order to determine in which direction sh they should be sent on what output port. So let's go further into the routing in wide area networks. The, route, the task of the routing is to find the best path through the network, where best needs to be defined. We expect it to be universal so that all connected destinations should be reachable. It should be correct so that the computation of the routes actually lead to the destinations and do not end up in some other place. And it should also be optimal and, and use resources of the network efficiently, where the resources are the links and the switches. The other requirements or expectations on the implementation of routing. It should be simple enough so that it could run on the switches and that it converges in a short time. It should be robust. As you will see, the routing depends on exchange of messages between the switches. And if the network is overloaded, those messages could also be delayed or even lost. And it should still be possible to compute routes so that you can avoid perhaps the overloaded part and switch the traffic over to parts of the network which are more lightly loaded. It should also be robust so that if certain links fail, there can be a recomputation of routes to bypass the failure and continue to operate the network if possible. The routing should also be stable. That means that if there are several route choices, there should not be any oscillation or frequent changes between these route choices. And it should be fair. It should not lock out any packets or destinations. So some destinations should not be routed, for instance, over low capacity links while others are always routed over high capacity links, meaning that they see very different quality of service. There are various strategies to the routing. We need to define the optimality criteria. So we could say that we want to have the path with the fewest number of links or the fewest number of switches. Or we would like to use paths which have the highest capacity or paths with the lowest end-to-end -end delay, which could be the propagation time, meaning that you should, should choose the shortest geographical distances for the routes. Mm -hmm. But there could also be administrative policies affecting the choice of routes. For instance, to bypass certain countries which are, are deemed to be security risks for the traffic that is traveling through them. The routing means that the router computes the least cost path to all other routers. We represent the network as a graph, which means that the switches and the links in the network are represented as nodes and edges, edges just being the lines between the nodes. We put weight on the edges, which corresponds to the cost of using that link. So again, we could have this optimality criteria as being the shortest distance or the inverse of the capacity, so that the lower cost is better than the higher cost. We look at two algorithms for computing routes, Dijkstra's algorithm and Bellman-Ford algorithm. And we will look at the route, how the routing tables are constructed during the computation.